Good morning. Welcome to the Artist Appeals. This is my daily rant or rambling. And today I'm rambling with the dog as I walk around the neighborhood. My name is Erin Sparler, and in the Artist Appeals, we research and talk about how to make money with your art. How do you make a living in the creatives? Whether you're a photographer, illustrator, designer, sculptor, whatever your medium is, mixed media, whatever, printmaker, we try and unravel the mystery of how do you make money with your art. Anyways, I've been podcasting in these shorter formats every day, except for the weekends, took the weekend off for the last week, and uh, this is season three, season one and two, we have pretty much all long format episodes, a couple short ones in there, but mainly we interview some amazing guests, and I think we're going to have some really cool guests coming up this season as well, probably starting in about a week or two. This week, however, I want to share with you Art Biz Jam. This week, that's right, is Art Biz Jam. Um, This amazing art licensing conference was started by Phil Stobbs. She was on season one, I think. I think it was season one of the Artist Appeals and um, her partner. And, oh, I got to get Lori on here, actually, come to think of it. They have some amazing speakers speaking at Art Biz Jam this week. Starts on Wednesday. Still time to get in on this conference. There are... Um, I think 20 keynote speakers. I'm one of the breakout speakers. I present on how to photograph your art. You'll get to see me get hit in the head with uh, my ring light and then lift it up into the fan and nearly break it <laughs> and swear a little bit. Um, you know, it's, it's a really great opportunity. So I highly encourage you because Art Biz Jam is normally a week long and you have to go in person all week. And you have to pay for transportation and hotel plus the conference. It's quite expensive and quite quite time consuming. I went last year because it was in Philly and presented, but I couldn't go for the conference because I have young kids. I couldn't get away that long. So if you're like me, this is a great opportunity to really have amazing contacts, amazing learning experiences, and learn about the business of art. Um, Tammy Browning Smith, uh, like the premier copyright attorney, will be speaking as well as numerous other experienced licensees, licensors. Oh, it's going to be great. So I highly recommend it. If you can't spell that, it is A R T Art Biz B I Z Jams J A M S. There's still time to sign up. Highly recommend it. So, last week, we talked a bit about art, making art every day. And then on Friday, I went to the Allentown Art Museum. You know, now is a great time to get out and see some of the smaller art museums in your region. Um, We had the whole place to ourselves. We reserved a 3 3 o'clock time slot. Most of the museums are doing this now, where you go online, sign up, buy a ticket for a time slot and they're only allowing you know half capacity and you wear your mask there was nobody else there except the staff place was dead it was so surreal and beautiful to be able to just spend as much time as I wanted looking at a piece and reading the um, little captions next to them if you don't do that I highly recommend it because inevitably the curators offer some really neat insight into the pieces Um, I've posted some pictures and some short videos of some of the pieces online at my Instagram account Aaron.Circles or iConnect, which is my craft company. I think I've posted to both, different stuff. So I'll continue to post some more over this week, some more interesting works. One of the pieces that keeps resonating with me was a traditional fruit and uh, vegetable type of still life. These were really common back in the day. Uh, They're great decoration pieces. People always bought them because they weren't just pretty to hang in your dining room like we do now. You know, now we just hang up something that we think looks nice. But back in the day, it was all about 
not only looking really real because they didn't have photographs, but it was also about the symbolism of the piece. So traditional still lifes of fruit, vegetables, game, uh, wine, those types of things had symbolism incorporated into them. You know, the fruit um, might symbolize fertility. The um, game would symbolize abundance. And, you know, wine might symbolize celebration. But there might also be subtler symbols in there. And in this piece that was at the museum, that I'll post a picture to, it had little tiny bugs all over this hyper-realistic fruit. I mean, it was so beautifully done, this oil painting of a table of fruit and vegetables and flowers. But when you looked closer, there were caterpillars and ants and bugs crawling all over it. It was fantastic. A uh, little bit macabre and appropriate for the Halloween season coming up because it was meant as a symbol to remind us of mortality and the fact that life is transient and all things go back to whence they came. So, the museum really gave me some incredible examples of a variety of stuff to think about from oil paintings of industrialized society Oh, we got a nice little terrier here barking at us. And, uh, you know, to modern pop art, optical art that, you know, makes your eyes go cross-eyed to these metaphorical and symbolic works. Now, that's fine art. And in the Artist Appeals here, we try and talk about how to make money from your art. There's lots of different avenues. And the episode with Jeffrey Stoner... He's a fabulous photographer. He talks about how he's making a living through the traditional gallery system, how it's still valid. A lot of people have said that it's not, but I think it can be if you're a business professional. In that episode, he really talks about the importance of follow-up and how he makes sure to follow up with his galleries in the middle of the month, even several times a month, to make sure that they have enough of his inventory on stock so that if he's sold something, he brings them more product, more prints. If they sold a big one or sold a small one, it doesn't matter. He tracks it very closely with a spreadsheet. So he follows very good business practices. The other tips and tricks he gives is when you're thinking about galleries and the fine art system, you need to look for galleries that tell a story about your work, have high foot traffic, and have a high touch. So what does that mean? It means that you wanna research your galleries very closely. He will often go in dressed not too nicely, but not too bummy. He says that it's very important you look like the average Joe. And the first one or two times you go in, you don't even talk to him about your art. You go in and you see how they treat you as a customer. If you're not dressed like a bum and you're not dressed rich, how are they going to treat you? Are they going to um, ignore you? Are they going to overwhelm you with too much attention? You know, these are questions that you want to answer for yourself and experience. You also want to see what kind of foot traffic they have coming in. Are there a lot of people coming into the gallery? A lot of people walking by? Are there um, artists that you think are similar to your work? Maybe too similar? Or just similar enough that they'll bring in more people, uh, but you'll compliment them without competing with their work? Do you have something to offer the gallery in other words. And once you've established that the gallery or the museum or whatever is one that you wanna work with, then you can try and make an appointment with the buyer. So you wanna look for the buyer, um, either the owner or the manager. If it's a store and you're trying to sell wholesale, you wanna find the product buyer. So that's a little bit maybe jumping forward into sales, but it's always handy to think about these things in advance as you start to develop your product line. So the appeal system, art, we've talked about making art every day. It's the surest, quickest, best way to develop a voice, develop a style. Then product, 
product and product ladders are what we're going to be discussing this week, I think, unless I get off on a tangent <laughs> about Art Biz Jam. And, you know, it's just really important that you think about having artwork available as a variety of products at different price points. So once again, going back to Jeffrey as an example, um, his work at the Woolworth Walk Gallery is represented he has two main collections trains and goats photographs of trains and photographs of goats and his goats are very popular and he finds that oh that's a squirrel do you hear it um he finds that he puts out moo business cards and people collect the different goats because they're funny they smile they laugh they make you just think oh what silly goats and they'll collect those moo business cards as reminders of what they want to add to their collection he has smaller prints you know five by sevens and eight by tens and then he has larger prints and then he has really big ones and he finds that the bigger ones drives the sale of the smaller ones so whatever big piece he's got hanging on the wall will often be what people were buying smaller prints of so it's really so we got interrupted very briefly by a spam call and it kicked me out of the podcast. That happens. That's the beauty of these smaller sessions. They're very real. I think you've heard a dog and a squirrel and so forth and so on because I'm recording this as I'm walking with the dog. So as I was saying, product. It's very important that you start to think of your artwork in terms of different products that you can create from it an offer. This is referred to as a product ladder in business. A product ladder is the idea that you're supposed to have low price point stuff, medium price point stuff, and high price point stuff. I like to compare it to a menu. What's the first thing when you go into a restaurant and sit down that they bring you? They bring you a menu and they bring you a glass of water. The glass of water is free, and the menu is what they're offering. It's their products. So, start to think about your work in terms of what can I turn my artwork into? What types of products can I make from it to put on my menu? And with that, I'm gonna stop there because tomorrow I'll go into the menu analogy deeper. Stop back tomorrow and I will give you all the ways that a menu relates to a product ladder and it really is a helpful metaphor because you want to give them that glass of water free and then you want to give them the menu the glass of water if you're on the internet could be a free downloadable pdf or a um, desktop screensaver or a coupon for a discount these are called opt-ins okay there's other words for them too sometimes in business they call them opt-ins sometimes they call them lead magnets but it's where you give them the glass of water your website is comparable to the menu but if you're at a craft show same thing applies so Jeffrey Stoner's example he gives them a free business card in fact, they can take as many as they want because with Moo, you can print up to 50 different designs in one order. That's right. You can just go to Moo.com. You upload as many pictures onto business cards as you like. Maybe the backside is all the same, but the front is all different images of your goats or trains or whatever it is you do. Your shtick, your theme, your niche. And then they send them to you. So... You could have a free brochure, which would be your menu. You could have a free piece of candy, which is your glass of water. So start thinking about what can you give people for free and how can you provide them with a menu of your products and what is going to be on your menu. That's it for today's rambling, walking the dog podcast. Tomorrow... I'll talk more on the subject of products, product ladders, and what's on your menu. If you've got questions, hit me up. I'd love to hear them. This is Erin Sparler from 
The Artist Appeals, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for joining us, and have a good one.